crois. Hello? Hello. Right, I'm just going to share the uh, link. <laughs> I just shared a picture without the link. Hold on. Uh, don't switch. Hello? Can you can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Oh, great. Roger. I'm just gonna. So have you shared the link? I'll, I'll... No, I I just I just I just shared a a picture of the two of us here, <laughs> join, saying join us without a link. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm recording now from the get go. So they'll probably edit this part out where it's just the two of us. So because it's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> being silly we we got to get your video setup fixed man i mean the the camera is capturing like this horrible ceiling light we got to get you a studio i would appreciate that yeah, yeah. green screen uh i would i would appreciate the whole, whole whole setup do you have some do you have some other space in your uh house that could work um i mean maybe if you a good... separate camera that not pointing at the ceiling that could help that could yeah. help <laughs> yeah, I don't want to leave, do it too too low because you you start seeing a bed and all of the furn other embarrassing furniture as well. So I, <laughs> just, um... why why is that considered a bit embarrassing? I know what you mean, but it's kind of bizarre. It's like, oh, I have furniture. I'm ridiculous. <laughs> it's like kind of weird. Um, a bit concerned that nobody was... seems to be um, joining it's us just, now. It's just the two of us. We'll have to just shoot the shit, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so on the agenda, I, I went ahead and prepared these smooth slides. So it'd be a, a little bit of a shame if I can't use. We have the Godfathers. We have at least one person. That's excellent. Is there a little bit of a contrast here? Let's see here. I think people can't tell when the when the resolution gets so low. Hey everyone, good to see you all. I think we're gonna give everyone a few more seconds. At least get tomato in here. should probably announce it a little bit more in advance so that people have a chance to get in in time there we go good afternoon zazik or jan depending on which which name applies So I have eight, eight questions I prepared. Uh, hey, I have eight questions I prepared to tackle, or seven. Uh, that's all I have. Martin chickened out. He was supposed to talk about the KPI scheme, which maybe people are more interested in anyway, but we will see. Um, we have no face. Good to, good to have you on board, sir or madam, or whatever you are. Maybe you're a robot. I don't know. Joystream doesn't care. Um, let's see here. How long should we wait? I'll let you decide, Ben. I think until maybe five. Oh, five, five. past. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's wait. I think uh, Robert said he will possibly join later. He has some people over or something so he had to step out but he will possibly join later so it's not going to be that many this time we have seven up welcome welcome oh and we have seven ups kid i think in the background <laughs> and we have xcom welcome all right 6.05, I'm going to go. If people lose the context, it was their fault. So good to see everyone for this uh, community call. Um, I'm Badejo Mender, as you may know. Uh, to my, well, 
right on the screen, I have Ben Holden Crowther, the founding member, Sar. Is it King or Sar? I don't know. I'm just going to call I you. I prefer Dictator. Sar. I just want to make it clear. That I'm... Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Found the founding member, Dictator. Um, and uh, yeah, it's good to have everyone on this community call. I, I guess I could say two words about sort of what's going on before I jump into some questions that people had submitted. Uh, yo, yo, yo. Who was that? I just I want to reply to whoever. Yo, yo, no face. Yo. yo. Um, so what are we doing these days? We're still working on Giza. Uh, we're, there was a little, there was past, past few days, we thought that uh, maybe that there was going to be a huge delay. Uh, hold on. I need to mute you, no face. I'm sorry. No offense. Boris, I'm going to mute you as well. Robert was good at this. How do I do that? Mute. I can't. I can't mute Boris. That's weird. Okay, he's in some kind of a like. If you, if you want to make me an admin or whatever that is as well, then okay, uh, I'm happy I, I, to... let me do that. Make make host. I'm not sure what that would do. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That, that sounds good. Okay, there we go. So anyway, we're working on Giza, uh, Boris, and we're trying to get that out the door now. The best estimate we have is late December. Um, so that that's a very big release. We have one new big role, which is the distributor group. We have two new working groups, believe it or not. So everyone is going to get a role in the DAO at this point. Um, so it's going to be really exciting. Uh, and now we're looking at late December. So that's the deadline there. So I guess I'll just jump into the questions unless someone wants to intervene with a higher priority point or question. So I have eight questions, I believe that were submitted in advance. I'll jump through those. Um, so how do I do that? Do I full screen myself or I guess, I guess you guys, uh, it depends on, depending on how you see me. So let me put myself as speaker. I'm not sure what that does to the recording, but anyway, so first question someone asked, maybe we should have attribution on these. Well, I guess Ben, maybe you, you don't know who asked, do, do you? But, no. but maybe attribution would be useful. Definitely. Someone asked, can future projects fork Pioneer the same way Atlas can be forked? And uh, I'm not sure what the person means by future projects. Uh, anyone can fork Pioneer, certainly. Um, if you're another substrate chain, you can certainly fork it. It will be hard for you to use Pioneer if your substrate blockchain doesn't look very similar or really identical to ours, but you can. Uh, but if the person is just asking, can I as a person just run a fork of Pioneer, just like people can run a fork of Atlas, you certainly can. We expect people to do so. Uh, probably gateways would do so because uh, it's like a public service kind of a thing to offer people a way to, to go from the content side into the, to the governance side. You can't enforce that, but I think that's sort of like a very cheap service to, to run for the community. Um, but yes, that's the answer. Uh, I'm not super, I'm not expecting there to be like tons of innovation in terms of different kinds of pioneers. Cause I think there's only so much like importance uh, to like, to, to having different ways of slice, slicing the same pie there. But um, uh, yeah, can you, can you mute Boris? Cause I think he has a bunch of background noise coming in Ben, but I think he may be in some kind of pseudo mode. So that's the answer to that question. Um, Next question is voting power. Uh, I understand that you see the future of voting power more concentrated in the hands of validators and nominators, ultimately founding members, plus the other 85% to decide to mint tokens when they want, uh, want anything done, which in turn has to have a positive effect on token value by increasing demand. Basically classic stakeholder shareholder relationship. This is a much different economic model to what we play now. Um, so I guess it's not really a clear question here. I guess there may be an observation. Um, just to clarify one thing, it's not the case that voting power will be concentrated in validators and nominators. This, that's a misunderstanding. I, th I think maybe there are some, some, uh, incentives in the current runtime that cause that, 
Uh, but in the Olympia runtime, anyone who has been staking for any purpose, so if you're staking for a proposal or you're staking for uh, a job in the working groups, maybe you're a lead, maybe you're a worker, uh, if you're staking for any reason, you can still use that stake to vote in elections on the council. So it's not as if the validators or nominators are in some privileged position to be able to participate in governance. Everyone could reuse their stake in governance. Um, but I guess the question here is how we're doing it now is a little different to how it will be a mainnet. That's certainly the case uh, in many respects. Um, I think the most important difference between mainnet and now in terms of governance is really that we don't have really good um, like incentives for people to bother with voting right now. I think there are some incentives. I think people organize themselves a little bit. I think, uh, Ben, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are like these voting clubs almost in, jo in Joystream at this point where people try to get their favored person into the council. Isn't that right? Yeah, I certainly think there's a, there's a certain degree of that happening at the moment. It's, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very interesting how it's it sort of evolved over time. We definitely yes. didn't used to have that. Um, no. So, yeah, no yeah. And if, different factions of uh, different kind of the different parts of the Russian community almost. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We do definitely do have a degree of that. Yes. So I do expect that kind of activity to go on on mainnet, but I do think the incentive to vote or pay attention on testnet is quite a bit lower for so lower for so many reasons. So that means voting and like being a, a council member and presenting some kind of platform for how to change the system, that whole game is not really working the same way um, today where there's so little at stake and um, you know there aren't really any sort of long-term like stakeholders in the T-Joy allocation. It doesn't really sort of make sense because there's no, there's no link between T-Joy and Joy, like the main net Joy. So it doesn't really work as an incentive. Um, Oh, we got a huge question. So maybe we can get back to, no. Okay. I think that these are the questions. I'll get back to them. Egrex. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if this person is happy with my answer, but there are many differences. Not only validators and nominators can participate in governance with their stake. Um, there will be more of an incentive to vote well and pay attention to candidates and therefore for good candidates to try to separate themselves from bad candidates on mainnet than on testnet. So that's different. If I didn't address your question, I hope you're here and you can get back at me. Um, cool. Next question. Jump in at any time if anyone wants to. I didn't. Can people unmute themselves? Like actively? I guess uh, you can, but you're the maybe you're the host. Yeah, that's a good question. Just put it in the chat if you if you'd like to send anything for us now. Then, yeah, we'll, right. we'll unmute you. Okay, cool. Next question is mainnet KPIs. In another message, you hinted there will be KPI on mainnet, just completely managed and paid for by the council and working groups without pseudo or set balance. Who will top up the council mint gateways? So. I think maybe what I said was maybe a little bit misunderstood here. Um, ultimately, when on mainnet, you have the voters who vote for council members, they believe are going to do a good job. Council members are responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the system. They have to make sure that they hire the right lead, working group leads, that, they're, that the, like the dev team is spending enough resources on the right things, all the sort of... Uh, stuff that you would expect in order for the system to work well. And uh, they can do use whatever management technique they want. They can use OKRs or KPIs or some other, some sort of other management style I've never even heard of. But at the end of the day, their role is just to make sure everyone in the DAO is working together harmoniously, using the resources available in the optimal way to basically do what the voters do at the end of the day. Uh, which presumably is for the system to become bigger and more successful and so on. And so they may use KPIs like in terms of like the, the broader idea of key performance indicators, not KPIs in the sense that JS Genesis is currently doing specifically in order to get the council to do certain things. Um, so the main, on mainnet, the council may be using KPIs or any other management style that they choose to do. 
Um, so I hope that answers that part of the question. Who will top up the councilman? Um, that's another question, and that happens basically automatically. So over a given period of time, the council, the council, you can think of the council as having, having a budget basically. So they can they can spend or or issue a maximum certain number of tokens for a given period of time. So imagine let they, let's say they can they can print two million dollars over a six month period. These are just random numbers. Obviously, the 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 the, the quantities wouldn't be in dollars, but still, you, you get the idea. And then when another six month period begins, uh, if they had spent all of the of the funds that they could for whatever purpose. So that's salaries for the working groups, spending proposals, it's any funding, anything that the DAO needs to, to have joy tokens for really. Um, then that, that budget is, is reset basically. So then for the next six months, they would have a fresh $2 million of, of capital to spend. That will be their budget. And they'd have to use that optimally across all the different ways they could, they could use it basically. Um, so no one will top it up. There's an automatic resetting uh, or resupplying, you should say, of, of, the, of the budget, basically. Now, there's a question there. What if, what if the system becomes super successful and really they should, they should be able to spend $10 million or $100 million over every six-month period rather than $2 million, right? That's a fair point. And how you change those parameters is actually a broader topic there generally there are two ways to do one this would be a runtime upgrade and the other would be that it would be a proposal that itself would require probably quite a few councils in a row to confirm using a new feature of the new proposal system called constitutionality so we haven't really explored that that's coming out in olympia but basically that's the way you can make very uh, sort of high risk changes to the system using the proposal system sort of like changing the constitution of a country if you will um did I cover that? Get everything there, Ben? I think that was pretty good. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you kind of got to think about what KPIs are really for. And in my mind, it's kind of simulating what we're trying to do with the test net is simulate kind of the economic environment on the, on the main net. So the KPIs are us kind of forcing people to kind of think about increasing the value of the, mm -hmm. the test net almost, which is basically impossible because mm -hmm. we're obviously <laughs> we're in control of it. Um, but on mainnet, it will be a real incentive if you're a if you're a stakeholder in this system to be kind of increasing the overall kind of value of the, the well, not the product but the kind of the network. Uh, mm -hmm. So the KPIs the KPIs are a very artificial way of way of doing this at the moment. So there's it's difficult to say how exact what sort of scheme we'd use on on mainnet. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think you gave a, a pretty pretty good explanation there. Yeah, that's that's good to to point out that the KPI system now is really very artificial simulating. A, a basically that there is a market sort of giving a signal all the time to the voters and to the council about, hey, we think that the prospects of what you're doing is either good or bad, basically. Basically the way that a, a, a public company would look at the its stock price as a way to indicate whether they're doing good or bad decisions. Just that's put, putting it in, in very stark terms, but you get the idea. Um, okay. Anyone, people should just feel free to, to interject if, oh, we have a few more people here, um, if, they, um, if they want to. Otherwise, I will keep on trucking. Um, gateway training. In this video, 1266, you explain that gateway operators have to buy Joy and burn it for gigabytes, pay bandwidth providers, plus invest in product development, and that you expect some founding members to grow into that role. This is correct. Do you see a way the testnet, uh, way the testnet to incentivize and train us for that? That's an excellent question. Very insightful. This person knows their stuff. Uh, so credit to whoever submitted this. We got to get the credits up here, Ben. We got to get, we, we need some attribution. This is an excellent question. Um, I've thought about this many times. Uh, doing the full gateway thing, obviously, there are missing parts there that we can't do, but we could start very easily. So we could start with basically allowing people or encouraging people really and, and starting really the gateway working group where people would run their own instances of Atlas, right? So now there's one instance of Atlas running 
on JS Genesis infrastructure. That doesn't have to be the only one. And already at that point, each of the different instances, they get to control, for example, the featuring on their specific Atlas version. As people may, I'm not sure everyone has learned, but we're making it more and more possible for the Atlas, for whoever runs Atlas to customize the way that experience feels, right? So for example, which video is featured on the, on the main section, uh, sort of like the main landing page of, of, of Atlas, or which video is featured on each category on the new, uh, should I just open the site? I'm not sure how to do that with this uh, weird recording software. I'm, I'm not gonna try to do it. But basically, if you go into Atlas, there are lots of these places where stuff is featured and there's some curation in there. And, and that's something that different Atlas operators or gateways could run. And we could do that. I mean, in principle, there isn't a lot of technical obstacles to do it. It's more about manpower and all the other things we're prioritizing. But we could certainly start there. And then, you know, each one of those gateways, you know, maybe like, well, they, they, they wouldn't be called Joystream. It wouldn't be like Joystream.org and Joystream.xyz. They probably had totally different names and be totally rebranded, but they could they could then start to do their own marketing to attract their own user base that doesn't come to joystream.org. So that could probably be done now also. And they would have their own metrics. Now, uh, pushing much beyond that, I haven't thought of, but it could that could be interesting. And um, yeah, that is, that is possible. I think it's more a matter of priorities. Um, so... It's interesting that that someone is already interested and in, in looking into this. I think that's it's a really big and interesting opportunity for people to dive into. Uh, so um, so yeah, hopefully we can start to facilitate that a little bit further down the road. Um, so that's gateway training. Um, I'm just going to defer to you, Ben. Anything? I think that was a, a really good answer, and I think it's an excellent question. Yeah, that mm -hmm. that, that person has a real insight into what we're. Yeah, that person is a founding member or ought to be one. They right ought to now. be. I think they probably are. That is, a, <laughs> that is a pretty high level question. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Feedback. Is there a way to integrate new member feedback into the onboarding process? So this one I struggled with what exactly it means. Is there a way? Maybe I should have kept it out given that I have nothing insightful to say about it. Is there a way to integrate new member feedback into the onboarding process? I mean, onboarding process. What is uh, is is that? Uh, I'm not sure if someone's trying to say something, but uh, is that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. We have a we have we're all, we are like Robert, as you may know, is working on improving the onboarding for uh, new community members. Uh, I think people have seen maybe some courses that he's putting out, uh, like we're planning lots of things there. That'll be great. If it's this that he, this person is referring to, uh, I th I'm sure there will be an opportunity to give feedback to that soon. I think Robert just wants to push that a little bit further before it's really easier, clear for you guys what we have in mind for you to give feedback. Um, but I, I do worry whether I'm just talking about something totally unrelated to what's being asked. If you in general want to give feedback on the way onboarding is working, yes, you can give feedback about that. You can give feedback about everything. The most useful feedback is if you can, of course, solve the problem you're identifying. Uh, we know there are problems and our, what we struggle with is prioritizing all the different problems that are there and trying to execute on solving them. So the best kind of feedback is I found this problem. I think this can solve it. And Either I can solve it or I have solved it or give me some resources to go and solve it. That would be better. Um, but again, what do you think, Ben? I would just say that the way you can provide feedback probably might be by, firstly, you could obviously write to any one of us at JS Genesis. I mean, that might get lost among the messages that we get. The second way would be to do a forum post. That's likely to get a bit more visibility. And if you want to do a proposal, like a kind of signal proposal, a text proposal with whatever your idea is for some sort of improvement, then I think that would be an extremely strong um, way of making your concerns um, heard, basically, because then the council have to give their opinions on it. Uh, and if, if it's a big problem, then obviously we'll have to fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, if you're making proposals in that way, then that, that is, um, that's the idea, basically. So I'm, I'm very 
in favor of that in terms of the family member family member stuff as well mm-hmm. uh yeah so that'd be wise. yeah i think we need to help people there just know that this is possible i suspect many people may have ideas but they have no clue that I can go and ask for money and very likely get it if what I'm describing is clear and relates to one of the many problems in the DAO currently. So it's so easy yeah. to get bogged down with like the, the formal stuff like the KPIs and think, oh, I have to like follow this. <laughs> yes. Because those are so uh, those are so very established in the way you have to sort them out. But really, even better than that is some kind of original. Yes. Uh, original stuff because that, that's what you're gonna have to do on mainnet, really. That's what mm-hmm. we were almost talking about earlier that it's going to need a bit of creativity um, with thinking about how this is all going to work. So mm-hmm. um, if people can have those ideas and make proposals and that sort of stuff, then that's excellent, honestly. Yeah. I very much agree. It's a good point, actually. It is actually better than solving KPIs because KPIs are doing what we think is a good idea. It may not be easy, but this is actually you doing it based on your own initiative. All right. Let's not beat a dead horse. Next one is newcomer on council. How can a newcomer apply to council or become a validator where to get so many coins? At the moment, you need 25 million to become a council and about 5 million to become a validator. All right. So first of all, I should just admit these these numbers mean nothing to me. So what does that, Ben, help me out here. 25 25 million million is uh, a very, I, I understand what this person is saying. Um, yeah. How many dollars 25, is that in T Joy? Um, I guess Sam or someone would be uh, more familiar with the actual numbers, but that's a lot. That's uh, someone can look that up, but it will be on obviously the exchanges page. But that is that's a pretty sizable and unobtainable amount for any new person into the system. So I can understand what yeah. you're saying there. Um, but if uh, we do vote for um, people who are with our own um, Jess Genesis fund, $700. So that's probably not a very um, easy <laughs> amount for people to obtain. Um, to, earn, to earn, basically. Earn, that's, yeah. That earn as well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the answer to that is we'll vote for people who are uh, good candidates. Um, I think the we did used to have like a forum, where, forum post thing where people could um, submit their candidacy and we'd vote for them. Um, could, could, what, what are we doing there? Like, who, who you're saying we are voting? I uh, re, re, let me reveal my ignorance. I have no clue what we are doing in this regard. So, who is we? Is it you? Is it Martin? Uh, it was you. Did you? Yeah, it, it has been me um, historically. Um, okay. So you're king both of, seen... the, of the council and the funding member program. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's yeah. It's a bit. It's quite a lot of responsibility. So, um, if I do see any new people like I, w- I would try not to vote in founding members again because they've already kind of had the opportunity to show themselves and obviously they've got when, when you say few... c when you say c i'm just i'm just gonna cut you off because i'm rude Sorry. when you say c do you mean that they have applied to get into the council they is that no, when you see them i wouldn't just automatically vote some new person in okay. just because they've made an application because it okay you could so easily sibble that and then i would just right. be voting for but if you give some sort of um explanation in a form like we have i'm not sure how much this is happening now because i haven't really seen it um recently whether people are making forum posts um i certainly haven't seen any of those lately mm-hmm. where you can if you're a new community member you can uh, uh write why you think you'd be a good council member and if i see reasonable posts there then i do give those people quite a sizable chunk of tokens and i think that's how historically some of the founding members okay here's the motto saying Okay, yeah, the, the 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 voting has been a bit more limited recently. So, um, yeah, it's just so difficult at the moment because we get quite a few, we get so many people not writing very much and not saying, really communicating why they would be a good council member. And for me to then put $700 or whatever is behind them to, be, to become a council member, it's, it's sometimes difficult to justify. So there's a question there about how we can get people more easily into the, mm-hmm. into the council. Yeah, it's a it's a tricky issue. Um, I would say if you're really convinced that you'd be a good council member, then just send me a message directly, and I've got control of some. Uh, Sam saying something again. Um, yeah, tomato yeah, saying so, it's temporary. Saying uh, uh, and uh, person whose name I can't pronounce is leaving. 
Pi, uh, but it's a temporary problem. Pioneer V2 will have a far better way for announcing that doesn't involve forum threads. Yes, but I think, uh, Tomato, that I don't think that solves it because you wouldn't even think to announce if you're seeing that everyone who announces ne ha has either been elected before or they have a, uh, a ton of stake and you don't. If you don't see any, if you have no reason to think that JS Genesis or someone is going to come in and put a, a ton of tokens behind you, you wouldn't even bother like investing in having a nice cover photo and like all the stuff you can do in Pioneer. Re really, to, to make that effort, you really need to think that if there's some way you can get in there. So I'm not sure I buy that Pioneer can really save us from that specific problem. One, one thing I would say anyway is I'm not sure whether council member is necessarily the best role for a new person coming in because it does need some knowledge of how everything fits together and it's not necessarily easy I'm, to... I'm not so sure, but the, is, if the information was well presented, I think, uh, I think a new person could sort of find their spot on the council. I think that may be true, yeah. So I've, I've aired the radical idea of just JS Genesis just pseudoing the council every time. So every, every week we see some new fresh faces coming in, maybe some old, peop old people, <coughs> excuse me, probably some founding members or elite people who can be there to sort of help everyone. But basically we make it like a 80, 15, five kind of a mix between totally new people, kind of experienced <laughs> senior people and then like Jedi's. I, I, yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea, actually. Um, I'm quite in favor of that, honestly, that we should just have some sort of, because it's such an important role mm -hmm. for people to start kind of getting onboarded into that it would almost be a better system than this, this very uh, relying on this really warped distribution of tokens in the testnet system <laughs> that we currently have, which doesn't, doesn't really, obviously it, the one problem is that it gets the same people over and over again, which might yeah. be really good, but it's not good. They might be good participants, I mean. They might be good council members, but it's yeah. not good from a mainnet or founding members exactly. perspective of, exactly. of collecting all of the good people that we want and giving exactly. everybody an opportunity. So, yeah, I think that's something we should pursue, uh, maybe even talk about that after the call, that that is that's quite a severe problem, which has been um, reminded us uh, of that there, that... Mm -hmm. There is a, a lot of friction if you're a new person to get into the, into the council. So mm -hmm. um, this, this pseudo idea, I don't, I don't think it's bad at all. It, in other areas, yeah, I, I think it would cause problems. But in this particular issue there, yeah. Because it's like if we, if we make that one intervention, we just say council, and then the rest is sort of administrated by that council, it's sort of still it's still meaningful activity. It's just that we're displacing all the voting, which is now anyway kind of weird. Like, yeah, the voting is zero. bizarre. I mean, yeah. yeah, as I say, it's just the tokens are. What is that? I mean, to some degree, it's linked to the work people have done on the test net, which is fair. Yeah. Uh, but in other regards, if you were there six months ago, you've got so many more than anybody <laughs> who's joined recently. So it's yeah, it's horrible. It's a horrible system. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's I'm behind this. I wonder thing. why. Sh sh maybe the. Actually, in some sense, the people who have the most T joy are likely to the people who are, they're likely founding members, they're likely elite people. They should really be thinking, how can I spread this out to get new people in? Because they are obviously very aligned with the prospects of Joystream overall. They must recognize that um, right now is the time to build that critical mass of people who really know what they're doing when Mainnet arrives. So whoever you are, all the whales and the Joystream DAO, this is an official message from JS Genesis to all the whales in the Joystream DAO. Please share your, your wealth. Allow new people to come in. Uh, it's going to serve you in terms of having the mainnet be more robust and having more founding members because more people got to try. There we go. And especially, that, because, and especially because voting isn't actually spending tokens. It's just kind of locking them for a little while. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're losing any of the mm -hmm. value there. You're just signaling that you would like the, mm -hmm. the, the pool of participants, uh, useful participants really to grow. So I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I think we, we, we covered that pretty well. Next one is NFT feature, features. Um, 
I'd like to understand how NFT generation functionality will be implemented into current list of functions and how it will cooperate with each other. So NFT generation, I guess that's like minting the NFTs, but NFT features is more broad than that. So in the, in the, in the Joystream and blockchain currently, this has already been implemented. We really have a fully fledged like NFT market. So you can mint your NFTs, you can auction them away, you can give them to other people, you can sell them to a specific other person. Um, we have the full range of NFT marketplace functionality, equivalent and probably more than OpenSea. It's not, it's, not, it's not an exaggeration to say that. And the design side of that is also now in a very mature state. So um, the NFT generation features, the minting features will be whenever you, I wish I could just, should I just show the designs? I should have been more prepared uh, with showing some designs. Uh, maybe, let me, let me circle back to this later uh, in case there are other questions. And, and I'll see if I can do it. But basically, whenever you, let's say, for example, you upload a video, you can choose to also issue an NFT for that video, which is basically the same as saying the person who holds that NFT, it's a one of one, is effectively the, the, the owner of that video without any IP claims or anything, but you're like the canonical owner for that video. And you're going to be displayed like on the playback experience for that video. People can see that you're the owner. Um, and then you could do all the normal stuff with uh, auctioning it off and uh, you can bid on other people's NFTs. If you find a cool video, maybe a video you think is going to go viral in the future, you can go and bid on it and, and sort of get it below future market price and so on. And obviously the creator gets to actually make the issue, issuance and sell it and get revenue. And they also get royalty. So if an NFT is sold first to someone, or issues to someone, maybe for maybe for payment, and then it's sold to someone else in, in out in the market. The creator gets a cash flow from that as well, as do the social token holders for this person if they have a social token. But more about that in the future. Um, so you should think of Joystream as having a full NFT marketplace functionality built in for videos. And that the integration in Atlas is that you can do all of these transactions and you can see who owns what. When you see a video, you can see the owner and the channel. So yeah, just think of the, the normal Atlas experience where you just see ownership information and transactional information combined. Uh, and the designers have found a really, I think, nice way of, of putting it in there, which doesn't sort of, if you just want to watch content and you don't care about who owns anything, it's fine. You don't need to deal with it. Uh, or if you're totally obsessed with all the NFTs and you want to find the new hot thing that's going to go viral, uh, there are special like areas and feeds that you could look at to, to find that stuff. So I hope that helps. I will try to figure out how to show it on screen, but that's the TLDR on the NFT features, which when will they come out is a little bit unclear. Uh, it's kind of unrelated to Giza and Olympia. It's totally different. I think the earliest it could come out is Olympia. Uh, realistically, but, um, but we will see. Um, okay. So last question, valuable activities. This is a, this is a repeat question to say it mildly. Current most valuable activities get, get more founding member points in current experience. So I guess the question is what, what, what activities? So do you want to do your normal thing, Ben, where you answer this question? Yeah. Um, as I said, I, as you said, I think this is a question we had last time. So um, when they say current most valuable activities, I think that's a bit strange because I think most of the time the, the sort of activities we want are, are really the same um, over time. Um, obviously, participating in roles, um, being on the council, uh, doing bounties um original kind of projects um like dap looker or joystream stats or like development stuff but also projects in the sense of maybe how many of those have we had too, too few um, how, how many do you think if you could just often in terms of that? like actual actual um services type tools like um doesn't have to be only no. tooling. I'm saying anything across, like throwing a festival. I, I'm not. I I wouldn't say that's super useful, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Like I mean, all the things of, you could do. 
That's yeah. oh, so you want a list of those or you want how many of Yeah, I mean, like of? roughly what do you think in terms of the, the number there of people just um, coming up with a new thing, getting support for it, and it being a, an important thing for their founding member status? I'm not necessarily sure they've even got support for it. Like I wouldn't say even people oh. have necessarily used the proposal system to fund those sorts of things. Why Although often they is? do. Often there is quite a lot of that as well. Um, but not always. Um, so probably 10 to 15. 10 to 15 is a the is a number that I would just okay. pull out of the yeah. It's not so bad. Okay. It's not so bad. I think it's too few. I mean, what's sitting there is basically a it's a pot of gold. You just ask it for money. And yeah, you could like cheat it once, just be annoying. Uh, but you can also <laughs> just get money for some project that you think is cool that can help. So yeah. I think it's just too too hidden and too like obscure how to that you could do that. Um yeah, it's a it's a no brainer to me, really. Um, so, so of course, the council should it, be approving those sorts of things. And I, I think it wouldn't yes. even need for us to agree to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, you, you mean it's just from would... us, or it's from the council? What are you talking no, about meant, now? I meant, I meant from the council. Like, if someone said, "I want to make," let's say, someone said, "I want to make the Joystream podcast every week." I interview someone some lead or a worker or a creator or someone and i discuss what's going on there there have been some initiatives that have been started like that that are really cool but let's say someone say i'm going to make 20 episodes and i've already made three or something like that do you think the council would say yes to that and they let's say they ask for a thousand bucks i don't know if that's reasonable but just random random kind of a high user one uh random kind of a observation a question now i'm not that would pass I'm not actually sure. I think they should. They obviously should do, but I'm not sure what the in, if there's necessarily a lot of incentives for them oh, right. to always oh, vote good... effectively on that sort of thing. Yeah, there um, isn't actually now that you say so. Yeah. So that's kind of tricky, um, and I think they would be focused on the tokenomics side of it, uh, and how that's going to affect the inflation and that kind of thing <laughs> often. Yes. So that's kind of tricky, and I'm not sure if necessarily all of that kind of stuff would get voted through. So. We may need to think about that, how, how that would be better incentivized from the council's point of view. Obviously, if they're founding members, then having these sorts of projects is just kind of good for them anyway, in a kind of indirect way, and just mm -hmm. increasing the general um, energy and kind of value of the project. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a, really, that's a really good thing, <laughs> kind of interesting point yeah, that they, they may not actually, so, yeah. They may not support it. Even leaving aside the thousand dollars, maybe that's way too much. But just if they, if there's no, if there's no cape, I mean, how you can't, I can't even make a KPI for that. Except good proposals for spending, that is KPI number tw ten. That doesn't, that doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, you could, you could look at the outcome of, you could look at the outcome of proposals for 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 funds, but then that's pro like the, the proposal is probably going to end well after the council's finished like the council would finish in the week and the outcome of the of the spending proposal may be only two months yeah it's super difficult to measure these things as well I, yeah it's very challenging i think we should have probably thought about that um before <laughs> seeing as that's kind of one of the things we want to incentivize well, maybe, the big way yeah, maybe that means we should maybe that means it should be a jay Sinister thing actually because yeah because i would say it so. would be too complicated to get the council to really like, internalize that I agree. It's like we've talked about sometimes. Um, we've had the suggestion of moving the founding member program onto the test net, so the participants kind of deciding who gets the the yeah. points and that kind of thing, and them grading it. But it's the same kind of complicated thing where that's now almost too far from JS Genesis for people to be able to make a, a a good decision on those kind of things. So is that really the same thing? I'm not sure that's the same thing. Who who raised that question, by the way? Was that Andy or? I don't know. Someone asked this question recently. It was an idea. Maybe it was L1 Dev or uh, they basically said, is it OKCO? No, is Nana Pass? I don't know. Nana. I'm just going to say Nana. I don't think the person is here, at least with the same name. I think they said something like, uh, can we just have them vote for each other? And that doesn't seem to have the same problem. It doesn't have this timing problem because they just vote and they just say, we rank everyone in the testnet in these terms. 
And then maybe you have like uh, JS Genesis as like the filter to remove obvious kind of abuse, or I don't know what there could be, but I think there needs to be like a stopgap there. And then I'm not sure that's, a, that's the same problem. The problem here is literally someone asked for $1,000 to pay for graphics for their podcast or something. And then the, the actual last 20th episode is delivered in two months and the council is long gone. And so you're going to give them T-Joy or some weird scoring points after. It's just a very, that's a very complicated thing. So, so I no, Ben, I disagree. I totally disagree. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I, it's, we've really gone very tangentially off this question now. Um, oh, what was the question again? And sorry, current, valuable most valuable activities to get more. <laughs> okay. No, that was a very useful tangent actually to think about that kind of yeah. stuff. But yeah, yeah. Um, so the answer to that question is there's no change in the value in how valuable things are over the periods. Um, and I have just said original projects are valuable. You know, in terms of founding member points, sorry, you don't need to get it. Well, it would obviously be useful for you if you got it funded by the council. Mm -hmm. um, but those original projects Why? will always, well, is just so you can kind of pay for it. If oh, oh a, sure, sure. Um, but if you do that uh, out of your own pocket or with some other type of arrangement, then you will still get founding member points for it if, mm -hmm. if we find out about it. Um, the, the way that it's getting funded or um, organized won't generally have a, uh, an impact on, on how many points you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else to get founding member points? I mean, I think just um, I would just refer people to the, my previous answer in the in the last mm -hmm. couple. I would say, yeah, yeah, we have. All, I think we've already had this question. Really, I I would say what's really valuable is people who can solve, identify, and solve problems on their own. Now the different. What are the problem, most severe problems at any given time may in fact change. Uh, but that principle, I think, still stands. So I think everyone can sense that now a big problem is onboarding. Like way, way back in the day, onboarding maybe wasn't a problem because there was no, nothing to onboard into or, or like there was nothing to do or there were too few people or something. Today, the problem is, is clearly onboarding into something. So explaining, educating, connecting with people, like all these things having to do with solving that problem seems to me to be a problem. But there are probably other problems that are invisible to me. So you just need to explain why it's a problem and then solve it, I think. But what it is, is going to be different at different times because the project's evolving, the people are evolving, the test net tech features and everything is evolving. Um, so for example, right now in Giza, we're going to get the distributor Lee distribution system up, which is basically like, like a CDN run by the DAO. And so, you know, for example, a problem I foresee is that we don't have any good way to check whether that system works against like denial of service attacks or something like that. So a person looking at this, if they were technical or semi-technical, they could say, hey, I see we have a new a distributor working group and people running distributor nodes to send the data to end users and so on. I am concerned maybe there could be a denial of service attack. I tested it on this one node and it crashed. So I have now written some scripts or something, or I want to write some scripts to actually allow us to run full scale sort of simulated attacks on the that infrastructure. So that specific problem, to the extent that it is a problem, didn't exist before. But the principle is always the same of contributing to solve whatever problems we have by your own initiative and, and capabilities. So I think we'll leave it at that. So that's the last question. We have 10 minutes of the scheduled time. I feel like I'd want to get some questions going from someone. We did have some in the chat here. Uh, okay, before I dive into that, does anyone have the courage just go ahead and ask some sort of question that they want to get the answer to we may have said we've probably have said something that you're puzzled by or confused by and you'll get founding member points as well if you do a question now uh, <laughs> yes no seriously though because it, i mean it's that does take some confidence so uh i will say that i'm not gonna say amount but that will be worth some points the first person now to ask a question if they have any um we'll get some points nice ben. All right. 
So Robert told me the trick is just to wait, wait, just wait two minutes, five minutes. Someone has to say something eventually or, or, or everyone just leaves. <laughs> oh, there we go. We have no face. I think you need to do something to, to, I think I've asked. Actually, asked if, they, if they need to use that feature, uh, then they need to know about that. Does, does everyone know how to do that? I'm trying to, I'm sorry. I'm trying to unmute. There we go. Hello. Hey, there we go. Hello. Oh, got some feedback. Let me mute myself. Hello. How's everyone doing? Yep. Okay. We can, awesome. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Doing well. Sorry. I misheard that. Hey. Can you guys hear me better now? Now. Yes, we do. Yep. How are you doing? Yeah. It was my headphones, my Bluetooth headphones. Sorry about that. So, uh, I guess oh. over the past couple of weeks, what have you guys been the most proud of? Oh, I, th I think the, the audio is super, super choppy, so I can't hear you, I'm afraid, no face. So, can maybe you say it again? In, could, you, could you maybe type that into the chat? All right. Yeah, I think now we, headphones yeah. might be causing some... I have the benefit of speaking with no audio from no face. You're right, uh, Alexander. Was it something like what was the most inspiring contribution or that we've seen over the last few weeks or what was the most inspiring, something like that? That's what I... Let's go to another question while he's typing that. All right. Um, okay. I think Andy has another one. The, sec uh, the security of the project after it's released to the main net. Uh, all right, since okay. everything is decided by a vote and um, council members are elected for tokens, um, then the uh, one who has more of them in the end is the main one. What place will Je Genesis take in the DAO after its launch? Will you be a part of the council? Uh, are you going to have a majority in it? Excellent questions. These are hard hitting. Let's make sure we cover all of it. Um, security of the project. So I think he means in terms of the integrity of the governance system here specifically. And so, so I think Maybe the question is, Andy, that if JS Genesis plays no part in the uh, political process of electing the council members and being a council member, is the system secure? I think, is, is that the question? Would you say, Ben? Something to do for me with the, um, with who has which portion of tokens, and obviously that's going to affect the voting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm. I yeah, I think I think it's what I think it's what you said basically. Yeah, just just if you if you just explore that, I'm sure that'll be okay. useful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, Robert. By the way, Robert's here. Uh, so, uh, and I'm sorry, no face, that we didn't get your your question. If your audio gets better, let's let's give it another crack. So, we, sorry, we've the, got no. Just to clarify, we've got no faces question here from Tomato, who's uh, written down. Uh, oh, okay. So we do have that there. What Answering accomplishment are you most proud of over the past few weeks, but accidentally sent it to me as a DM? What am I? So like, is this a person is no face asked me to recite something I've actually already stated. So he's checking whether I'm consistent. So my memory is extremely, extremely poor. So I don't actually remember what I'm most proud of, despite the fact that I may have already said that to you. So I'm, I don't know. That... Oh, Oh, I, okay. I'm confusing myself. Okay. What I say, I think the question is just, what are we most proud of the past few weeks? I think what I'm most proud of, I'm not sure what I should say for myself, but for the project, there are lots of excellent things happening, but one very, very important thing is that we've had two very senior people join. One is Robert, who is uh, silently observing, who is our CMO, helping us with marketing. Because if you know one thing about Joystream, it's that Joystream don't do no marketing. That's been our principle so far. Uh, so definitely uh, onboarding him, 
And then we have another person, Dimitri, who just joined the Discord uh, today, I believe, who is a product manager with a lot of experience helping us make sure that both, well, Atlas, Pioneer, and our releases are being, first of all, getting a lot more input from users than we did before. So we're going to do a lot better with uh, real data from users, informing how we design products and make product decisions, and simply just uh, doing resource planning and scheduling so that we are able to deliver in a more timely manner and freeing me up from doing those tasks in a bad way so that I can do other more strategic tasks. So those two hires, which um, actually I think are going to be pivotal for us, are the most important ones for the project. Other excellent work has been happening as well. Um, all the NFT designs are now pretty much done, and I'm just so psyched about them. I can't wait for them to go out uh, to to go live. Um, we had all the uh, all the the work that had gone into like the the categories and the featuring, and the fact that we're going to have the community control the featuring, which for a long time was very stale. Uh, I think that's going to be great. Um, the Giza team has been doing excellent work trying to get that release done, and uh, like we're, we're this close, it's like testing and like the last mile issues that we're dealing with at this point. So across the board, there are a lot of things going well that I'm very happy with and proud of. And, you know, I'm only tangentially involved in most of them. So that I would say is a, a nice uh, smattering of, of the different things we've, we've gone through. I hope that, I hope that was uh, covered some interesting topics. No face. Feel free to have follow up with anything. Uh, let's get back to Andy who asked, basically, is it going to be secure? And I'm going to basically interpret him, him to be saying, I'm assuming it's a him. Sorry. Uh, basically if JS Genesis isn't there, will the train just sort of go, you know, off, off, off the rails? And I don't think so. Uh, I really don't, uh, not only because. JS Genesis will hold a, well, hopefully a relatively small share of the supply at that point in time. Um, and, uh, you know, I think if we've done our job properly, the founding members are going to be the one who are in charge um, more so than any random person showing up, somehow acquiring a gigantic stake of joy tokens and then going amok. I just think it's very, very implausible. Uh, so I could see a million other problems before that being a, a likely problem. Um, so no, I would say I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. Certainly in the immediate launch of the system, no. Longer term, it's an open question. What does the long-term future look like? Who holds what tokens in the long-term? Um, like how well do voters pay attention to council elections? Uh, it's much better than the normal proposal system scheme that you have in other DAOs where every voter has to vote on every single thing every time. But it still means, let's say councils have elections every four months, let's say, um, still means that you need a decent percentage of people to show up to make sure that it's hard to not rig a council. And uh, the other feature that makes me kind of um, or very, uh, well, kind of not that concerned, even if we would have a problem like that, is that we're going to have this concept of constitutionality, which means that if you're going to do a runtime upgrade, you can't pass it by one council. If you only need to pass it by one council, you just need to like wait until like people aren't paying attention. And then like, you know, if, if the market cap is low and very few people are voting, then you could like spend a few million dollars or whatever it requires, and then you've captured the council. And then you could do a runtime upgrade. So if you have that all prepared and ready, and then you're like in charge, that would be very bad. But with constitutionality, it means that if you're going to do something critical, like a runtime upgrade, you have to get multiple councils in a row to say yes. So you make you submit it to one council, and they say, okay, yes, we accept this runtime upgrade. And then the next council has to say yes again. And then for however many in a row, and this can be different for different proposals. So let's say someone spends $15 million, gets some tokens on the market, captures one council, they put in a bad runtime. Okay, what have you get? You have one bad runtime. But now everyone knows. Everyone can see that there's a bad runtime in the proposal queue. 
and it's going to come up for re-election, let's say, three more times or something. Okay, well, that's a problem for you because then if then people are going to mobilize, then they're going to be people saying, hey, we need to do something. And then there's going to be more coordination to make sure your proposal is going to have a problem in subsequent councils. So obviously there are a few parameters here about how many, how many per councils in a row for a runtime upgrade, how long should each council be. These are variables that we still have to work out. But I think with those two tools, I think you, you can make it quite unattractive. Like of all the things you could do with a few million dollars, is that the thing you want to do? That's going to be really unclear to me. So, but again, for the long term, the long term is a long period of time. There, you know, it's, it's unclear. I, I'll be as honest to say that. I'm optimistic, but you know, over a very long period of time, lots of weird things can happen. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Do you, Ben, know of any other governance systems where something like that has happened, where it was just captured and then the people who captured it like blew it up? This is such a new area. I, I think yeah. maybe in a few years we'll see this kind of um, maybe opportunistic um, these opportunistic attempts to ca kind of capture these DAOs almost, but. I mean, this is so new. I, I think it's a bit unprecedented to even, mm -hmm. from my perspective. Um, I'm not aware of, I mean, in, in the sense of these kind of more advanced DAOs. I mean, obviously we do have these kind of primitive ones, but mm -hmm. um, I'm not really sure what the incentive is in, in some of them. Um, yeah. Sorry, you're not sure what the incentive is in what? Uh, for capturing some of the, the DAOs that are currently um, about. I mean, there aren't obviously... Well, there are some. I mean, there are some. Yeah, some yeah. Downs I'll admit that. I'm, I'm, I haven't really thought yeah. it through. It's a pretty <laughs> terrible answer. Um, I guess yeah. I might add to the question where, where where Andy has kind of expanded on it and said, if the founding members only have 15% of the tokens, then how can they manage the platform? So could you, Badejo, maybe just say how the tokens are actually distributed on mainnet to just clarify that? Because it's not really that the founding members have just 15% of the control, I think. I think there was something about maybe governance blacklisting, which might make, have an effect on that. That's also there's, true. There's also so, the investors obviously as well would be having it, would really want to, wanting to be probably acting in a sensible way in terms of um, mm -hmm. in the, in the long-term interests of the platform. Mm -hmm. And I think it's 50% of the tokens are going to the community as a whole, maybe something yes. close to that number, perhaps. So yeah, yes. it's not bad people that are going to be given the tokens at the beginning, maybe not founding members with like 50% control, but, it's not going to be bad people at, at their genesis um, point, really. So I'm not sure where this control is going to be lost unless everybody yeah, sells their tokens and kind of gives the whole <laughs> <laughs> network away. Well, then there, there probably is some other problem in, the, in that case. But yes, uh, but I think one thing, Andy, is, is the 15% number is too low. Maybe by two or three X, right? So um, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Um, at the same time, you say you will not participate in politics, so random people who buy tokens on the market will participate in it. So that's true. Random people will, well, to the extent they want to, but yes, random people will. And that, I would, to me, that's a feature. I'm not, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, they can participate by being council members, but you, I think you'd have to be pretty sophisticated to really become a council member. Uh, I don't think you could just show up and have no clue and just have your, like, your polka.js extension and like, hey vote for me. I'm going to make sure things work out. I can't imagine who would, who would stake for you in that case. You need to build up some credibility to, do, to really have a shot at convincing people to, to allow you on board. So I think um, but random people eventually will make their way into the, into the politics, so to speak, of the Joystream governance, and that to me is not a problem. Um, that's, I guess, is a philosophical question. Um, uh, so will I sp personally do it? I probably need to make sure that I communicate consistently about that. Um, so I will just say, let, I probably should wait to another time to give some clear, coherent statement about like, what will I do and what will JS Genesis do? But I guess you could say as a matter, like the overall framework you should think of it as I am really aiming to not being involved, certainly running the council or voting for the council or doing anything. And as Ben just mentioned, there we're going to build in this capability called blacklisting. Oh, well, I should say, we are planning to do it. I can't guarantee it, but this is very likely, uh, where you could basically 
say lock your account so f- from being able to participate in um, governance. Uh, and so if your account simultaneously is encumbered by some kind of lock or vesting schedule or something, you actually are just locked out. So that's something that I we are looking into uh, make offering for people who are early in the system who are not founding members to opt into. So, so hopefully that that's helpful. Um, all right. Uh, very interesting points being brought up. No face. I agree. Uh, these are interesting points. Um, uh, was there a question in the Russian Telegram about Joystream's participation in Parachain on Kusama? Any plans? Was the general plan for participating in auctions on Polkadot? Uh, we do plan to participate. We can't guarantee it. In like, we must have interoperability. I would say that's the number one feature we're looking for. You could do that through other ways. You don't have to be a Parachain to get interoperability, but. I think that's the smoothest way to do it. That's probably going to work best with the tools and the wallets and everything. So, but I think it's a little bit too early to say specific, specifically on on what relay chain would we try to do it and like what would be the different schemes involved with a possible crowd loan, which is which may just be a, a, a random buzzword for 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 whoever is not actually familiar with all the polka dot stuff. Um, but it's basically a way for a project like Joystream to incentivize the Polkadot community to allow it to become connected to it and get the benefits that result from that. Um, So we don't have specific plans, except that we are going to go for that unless there are some circumstances, like for example, it's extremely expensive. That would be one reason to try to find another path. But I think there'll be more than those two relay networks so there could be other more economic opportunities for that. Um, so my voice is starting to, to give out a little bit here. Let's see. Is there anything else? Did I skip something? Yeah. Oh, someone said someone said something. Does anyone else have a question? I think no face deserves the points, even though he wasn't able to transmit the message, Ben? Uh, um, yeah, I think his question has been answered now. Um, uh, we've got a question, another question about thinking about expanding the Joystream ecosystem. Do you think it makes sense to collaborate with indexing services like uh, subquery? Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, are we thinking of expanding the ecosystem? Uh, what are other ways we could do it ex- except for this specific way the person is mentioning? What, what else could that mean? We haven't really thought very much about partnerships and that kind of stuff. Frankly, because I haven't thought that there are many that make that, that much sense, but I haven't looked at it in detail. But it, you always see these partnerships like... Yeah, it's bizarre. Ex- I ex- see like everybody's <laughs> partnered with Moonbeam. Everybody's partnered with Akala. Everybody's... You know, you do see all of these... <laughs> very strange kind of partnerships which i think are almost kind of a marketing gimmick and i'm not even sure even how effective they are as a marketing gimmick either because if you're kind of aware of one of these projects you're probably aware of the other ones um right there should be like a like like a matrix thing where it's like row column is x partnered with y and it's like all full it's like a dense (laughs) yeah matrix (laughs) everyone's partnered with everyone else um (laughs) So I think maybe partnerships for, I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure what to make of it because all these, a lot of these projects are, and I don't want to be criticized, but a lot of them are quite centralized. There's a company that's very critical for the thing that is running on mainnet. So you can, you can say that there's a partnership between two actual corporate entities, but that's not really what we're going for in Joystream. It's not like we want the Joystream company to partner with some other company. Someone has, has a bunch of weird background noise. Can you? I'm gonna try and mute. Uh, is it Robert actually? Um, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm not sure who it is. Um, Boris again. Uh, okay. So, keep, keep if anyone has any sensible suggestions for partnerships and what that means, if it's a partnership between JS Genesis and another company, 
I'm going to say it probably has very limited relevance because JS Genesis is not really where it's at. It's the DAO itself. So what would it mean for a DAO to have a partnership? I haven't seen many of those yet. So that's my uh, sort of mood kill answer to that one. Um, there was a question about subquery network specifically. Now, for those who don't know, what is a subquery network? It is a, well, currently it is a framework and a hosted service for you to build your own indexing or API query. Uh, APIs for fetching the history and state of your blockchain. <clears throat> so if you want to ask a quick question about who was slashed at what time or any of these kinds of questions that a full node may not uh, have give you easy and convenient access to or may not have any information about at all, if it's not holding the full history, then, um, then you need something like a query layer. If you know the graph from the Ethereum ecosystem, subquery network is basically like that, but it's focused on the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, now, fun fact, we actually built an equivalent thing to subquery network, at least like the core um, tooling before that was even launched called Hydra. Um, and that's still what we're using. And that framework was actually very, very powerful. It's not like a distributed service thing where there are indexers and curators and all these things that you would find in the graph. And I think that the subquery network wants to do, but uh, you have this basic ability as a developer to spin up an API for your blockchain, basically. So we've already built that. And that was actually spun out of JS Genesis as a separate company. So the lead engineer that was working on that actually started a totally new project, which is called SubSquid that people may be familiar with, which has now received some VC funding and is like building on its own. So our plan is actually to partner with SubSquid in the sense that we're going to use the SubSquid framework, which is a, an improvement. So they put more effort and time into taking Hydra that we started with and enhancing it in various ways. Uh, mostly, I think performance has been the main thing they focused on, which we badly need. And, um, and so we're going to be adopting that. And that's going to be great for us because it means we can stop trying to maintain a totally separate, huge service like that on our own internally. So um, so that means it's very unlikely we'd use a subquery network, frankly, because a subquery network does not have the full feature set that we need that Hydra, Hydra slash sub squid does have. Um, there are a lot of details there about what exactly that is involves, which I will not go into, but basically uh, these things aren't totally fungible. Um, so uh, Tomato Spur asks, if Joystream participates in a parachain auction, would the tokens come out from outside the current? Excellent question. This is one of the problems. It would come from the Genesis supply, right? And these numbers I'm seeing are quite aggressive and they're quite aggressive for chains where I'm going to assume the valuation is already expected to be reasonably high, right? Now, I think what's happening in a lot of the parachains auctions is that there's extreme premium to being first, which has no value functionality wise. It's just being first means you're like some kind of a shelling point for the whole uh, Polkadot community. And so this attention means that you become sort of like a speculative asset for everyone um, because everyone's coordinated on this one thing. Obviously, the people who have actually done well and become parachains are all good projects. So I'm not trying to say that they're not good. All I'm saying is the astronomical amount of value that they're locking, giving away, I think is largely a function of that it may gives them a lot of speculative demand because they are first. So being 10th probably has a lot less value. And so I expect the price to go down effectively, but this is a lot of speculation for me now about where that's going to go. Um, but it would unfortunately come out of the Genesis supply, which means less for founding members, which is bad. Yeah. 
I, I do wonder sometimes what share of our community is Polkadot parachain oriented versus totally unrelated from it. I have no gauge of that at all. My, my well, estimation is that people are pretty familiar with that side of things. So I would say at least 50%. Oh, I see. People would know what you're talking about now oh, in okay. terms of parachain auction and things. Okay. So I wouldn't underestimate that side of it. So okay. when people hear that we're not like act really pursuing the parachain side of things, that may turn some people off. But if they listen to your detailed answer there, I think they would understand why that is. Um, yeah, it's, still, it's so interesting hearing this actually, uh, when you kind of articulate it in that way. You get a sense of the quality of the engineers that we have if we're able to spin off another side project, which then gets, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite impressive really, I would say. Yes. So we're such an under the radar project. Um, in that sense, and maybe because I agree. we've been so vocal in the whole parachain side of things and uh, taking the marketing advantage from that, maybe. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, yeah. I agree. I agree. We've uh, yeah, we've done. We've built a lot of stuff. I think that's still not widely like known about in the Polkadot ecosystem currently. So just the fact that we have our own totally different governance system when everyone else is using the off the shelf treasury kind of stuff, democracy stuff. Um, that's a big differentiator in and of itself just on. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to not going to blow our own horn, but you're right. I agree with you. Go joy stream. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I'm not just saying that to conserve my voice. I literally don't think there are any questions. And the only person who wanted to get founding member points for asking was no face. And so at this point, I guess we, we are over time anyway. What do you think, Ben? I think unless anybody wants to ask a question in the next 30 seconds, we should, uh, or 10 seconds, that's, maybe even then, then it's over. Oh, probably. we got Spet Sochi jumping in. Hello, guys. How are you? Hey, how do you do? Thanks, I'm fine. How about you? Can Excellent. you hear me? Nice. Yes, we can. Okay. Your audio is great. Sorry, you guys. I'm uh, uh, late for the meet meeting and I missed the question. Mm. How do... Oh, you muted yourself just ah, so you know. Okay, sorry. How to participate uh, to the council member? So, uh, um, for example, uh, $25 million need to participate, but I don't have too much money. And so, uh, Ben, could you... Remind, uh, please, how to do it. Yeah, so I, um, I missed the meeting and I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we did briefly. So we, we answered that question, but the. Um, let me try and remember what I said. Um, mm -hmm. so, Let's yeah, start with the punchline. Let's start with the punchline. Then we'll get you into the next council. How about that mm -hmm. one? End of if, story. If, if you can um, prove yourself well proof in some way that you'd be an effective council member then just send me a dm and i'll vote for you almost is is one go. bottom line from that um yeah we're very keen to kind of we, we were talking earlier about um maybe even changing the system a bit so that js genesis will pseudo in the council i mean that's obviously under needs a bit further discussion that we didn't really explore that very deeply um but yeah we're working on that basically is, is the bottom line also if you want to be in the next council just the person that sends me the longest essay on where they'd like to be a council member will probably be a council member, if that makes sense. So if you can convince me, then we want new people mm -hmm. and we've got some funds to, to use to vote for people. So, yeah, sorry you okay. missed that. Um, yeah, so I'll hand yeah, back. We're is. just finishing that. And uh, my question is for the Bedeco. Bedeco, are you going to uh, expand the uh, quantity of the participants to the council members or not? Whether we will make the council bigger from 20? Yeah, uh, bigger than 20, yeah, right. We, I haven't heard anyone mention it before you just now. I think we should we should scale it to be as big as, as, it, as it can be while the test net works. Mm -hmm. And it's like semi-realistic, I think. So I don't know whether going from 20 to 30 or 40, mm -hmm. how much it changes. I think someone like... Uh, Tomato or Martin would be able to say okay. whether that actually works. I would be open to doing it if it works. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends so on the activity, right? It 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 depends on how well the council. For example, mm -hmm. let's say you have let's say you had a hundred council members. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that we'd run into is it pro it could get really hard to pass proposals, maybe mm -hmm. because you need a like you need like eighty people to show up or something. Of course, we could adjust the quorum. So maybe there's a way to get around it. So my, my honest answer is, 
I haven't thought about how much beyond that we can go. I know Martin has been quite skeptical about going to a big, big number. Uh, but there is value in going to a big number because then we can get more new people to get, have a try. So I, so I see the value of that. Uh, but we haven't had any plans about it because it was already increased from, increased from 16 to 20 reasonably recently. So, but I, I don't think that's a reason for why we can't do it even further. Uh, okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And my, uh, my uh, next question um, uh, has been related with uh, implementing uh, with Coasama, uh, but you already replied. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's an interesting your solution. Are you going to implement or not? Mm -hmm. Kusama network. You're saying whether we're going to be a parachain on Kusama network? Parachain, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I was saying towards the end there that uh, our goal is to become a parachain of either Polkadot or Kusama. Uh, the, the cost side is what we're concerned about. How much of the Genesis supply do we have to s sacrifice for the dot holders? Because those are tokens we can't give to the uh, founding members, which are the ones that are actually going to do the work. The dot holders, uh, in principle, are not going to be doing any work unless they also get interested in the project. So, mm -hmm. um, so therefore, we have to look. And I think what's happening now is, uh, and I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but uh, it's very expensive. So you have to give a lot of tokens of your native chain in the auction to be a parachain, for example, on Polkadot, because it's so early. So being early mm -hmm. means you get a lot of attention, and this is worth a lot for chains to have this attention. So if you don't care about doing it for marketing purposes, if you only care about it for the functionality, which is interoperability mm -hmm. and shared security, if this is what you actually want, you're probably better off waiting for the prices to decline down. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that would probably be advisable for us because I don't see it's not an import it, it's not a useful marketing strategy for us because it doesn't serve any of our goals. If more people just knew about it and it costs a ton of tokens, uh, there are probably cheaper ways to have general awareness than that for us. I think for other chains like Akala and other the, these other guys, they're trying to build like maybe DeFi type platforms. So it's great for other people to be able to like start providing liquidity and doing lots of things with their assets. For us, that isn't so relevant. We're more trying to get people who can do work, like work in the council, work as content creators, work running infrastructure, like putting it in some uh, blood, sweat, and tears, not just putting capital on the chain. So, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. We're still a ways off from that. Okay. Thank yeah. you for the reply. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. I could ask you, so to you, mm -hmm. uh, would you like us to be a, a Kusama parachain and why or why not to you? To be honest, I never participate in Kusama, but it's interesting for me to um, um, take the coin um, in order to get in the future uh, benefit from mm -hmm. different projects. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting to invest, uh, to get uh, investors mm -hmm. for this uh, reason. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Why not? It is a, it's a very interesting mechanism. I agree. Um, I think people who've invested in some, some of the chains have done very well, like uh, Moon River, which is the Moon Meme Canary Network and stuff, done very well. So um, it's been a good My friends have, uh, have already uh, participated in this project and uh, got a lot of uh, big profit. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, remember, I uh, uh, remember that you mentioned in last meeting um, project uh, is going to um, start in the summer, yeah, in the in next year. Uh, go uh, live, I mean. Yeah, well, it's it's a little bit of a shifting target. Mm, I would say spring. So let's yeah. say yeah, March to June, somewhere March in that June, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's uh, imagine if um, project need to hand um, over in one month. Uh, and what's the pain right now on the project? What's the problem? Uh, if it's ready project for uh, this moment or not. You're saying, if, yeah. if we, what prevents us from launching in one month from today? That's your question. Yeah. yeah. Excellent okay. question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you what estimate uh, ready needs the project at the moment? Uh, where is the main pain and so on? I think there are two categories of problems. One is social. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. need founding members. 
We now have 28. That's insufficient. Mm -hmm. So if we just launched in a month, and let's say we get to 30 in a month, this is too low of a critical number of founding members. So even if all the technology and the products and everything mm -hmm. was perfect, we don't have enough people who know what to do, how to run the system to launch confidently in one month. So that's mm -hmm. one category of problems. Then there's obviously the technology and products. And so on the technology side, the most important thing is the runtime because it's the most risky to try to upgrade. It's the most uh, difficult thing to fix like uh, migrations and all sorts of things on if you want to do them later. If you change something, you have to change all the other software that lives on top has to update itself. So it's very painful to change. Yeah. So you want to try to, to get as most of it as stable and ready and mature as possible uh, where you think the governance system is robust enough, you think the core feature set on the content side and the infrastructure side and the NFT side, it all is good enough. Mm -hmm. And then you can go live. You don't want to launch where there's like big problems still. And so for us, getting to that milestone of having the runtime be ready involves having another audit. So audits are like these security audits where a security company when comes, comes in and looks at your source code basically and says, we think you have problem X, problem Y, problem Z. You need to fix them in these ways. So we've done that one time for our runtime already. And we need to do it one more time because we've made a bunch of changes. Like all the NFT stuff we've built recently that hasn't been audited. And one of the problems actually with auditing is there's so much demand for auditors that you have to book five to eight months in advance to have access to someone to audit your blockchain because there's so much demand. So that means you have to uh, right now, we've already secured two auditors. So if we, we have to be sure that we can have something ready to be audited in a long period of time into the future. So if we wanted to go live one month from now, we've had, we would have had to say early in 2021, we would have had to say, sort of tie our hands and say, we will go live in uh, December, we already know exactly the feature set, everything, and we will secure our auditors right now. So that's, a, that's very difficult to know with certainty so far ahead exactly where you have to be. So that's, that's sort of an unfortunate business aspect to the whole crypto industry. It's very hard to get new auditors. It's a, it's a skill that's very difficult. So you have a very limited set of auditors and they have a very long backlog of people to, to deal with. Um, Okay, I said a lot there. Hopefully, did, did that make sense to you? Thank you. Yeah, I'm satisfied. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Anyone else? Does he get points now? Obviously, he, he may be ending up on the council, as you just said. So remember, Spet Sochi, to send in your, your, your essay to, to Ben for why you need to be on the council. But does he get his founding member points? I think you get some funny moments. I think so. Good he, had like four, he had like four questions or something. Definitely. So if you just yeah. put in your report uh, for this period <laughs> that you were on the call then, uh, and answering questions, uh, asking yeah. questions, sorry. And I said that I promised you points, then I'll refer yeah, to this evidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. Yes. You probably know the Russian community collects money and uh, send to the you know, uh, newcomer and uh, help us this way. Yeah, because it's uh, really tricky to... Um, earn a lot of money, $25 million, really difficult. Yeah, yeah. I completely understand. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, the council has a lot of um, barriers to entry if you're not if you're not kind of familiar with how it's all set up and it's not that transparent yeah. with how the voting is working or that kind of thing. So I, I, I understand that the Russian community have kind of got their own uh, mechanisms for that, which is really good. Um, so no pain, no gain. <laughs> no pain, no gain. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good way okay. of describing it. Perfect. All right, my throat's starting to give out. Is there anyone else who has a great question? No, it doesn't have to be. Has a question? Go. No pain, no gain. All that stuff. I'm doing the thing, Robert, just like you said. All right, it didn't work. I chickened out. All right. It's good to have you all with us. I'm so, so surprised we got this many people for this uh, urgently and uh, organized call. I still think we covered a bunch of useful stuff. So thank you very much, everyone. If you have questions for next time, 
start compiling them as soon as possible so we can prioritize and give you some good content around that. And thank you very much, Ben. You were a great sparring partner and uh, Spat and No Face. No Face, get your Bluetooth in order and we'll have you on next time. Thank you very much for meeting. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.